Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to the Revere Chamber of Commerce per primary mayoral debate coming from the Revere High School Auditorium live on Revere TV. My name is Stephen Quigley, and I am the moderator for tonight. Joining me from the Revere Chamber are Niles Welch, Vice President, and Gertrude Magiza, Chamber Advocates Advocacy Liaison. Timekeeper for tonight will be Amanda Bonasaro, Chairwoman of the Chamber Events Committee. The debate will be divided into two parts. The first part, where each candidate will have to deliver an opening statement of two minutes, followed by th then that will be followed by three questions with a response time of 90 seconds per question. After all the candidates have given their answers to each of the last three questions, there will be an additional time of two minutes and 30 seconds to expound on their original answer or debate an answer that they've heard. The second part of the debate will consist of random questions, questioning submitted by residents, business owners, and associations in the community directed toward an individual candidate for two minutes. Only one candidate will have the opportunity to answer each question. There will be a total of 12 questions, three for each candidate. At the end, each candidate will then be given two minutes for a closing statement. The order of the candidates going was decided by a coin toss. Now, just a couple of housekeeping decorum rules for the audience. We ask members of the audience to refrain from clapping, speaking, or otherwise interrupting during the question and answer period of the debate. Applause should be saved for the opening and closing statements of the candidates only. No signs or other literature is allowed to be displayed or otherwise disseminated by candidates or audience members while inside the auditorium. Failure to adhere to these rules may result in removal from the auditorium. Police details will be present to assist in maintaining order and civility for the duration of the event. Maintaining respect and civility toward, our, to, toward those around you, including the candidates, audience, and moderators, will be expected at all times during the debate. For the candidates, the moderator and those on the panel have the responsibility of ensuring the debate format and time restraints for the event are followed. In order to ensure a successful debate, all candidates are expected to listen and obey instructions and or feedback from the moderator at all times. There will be an assigned timekeeper who will keep time for the candidate's answers and responses and notify the candidate through visual cues of one minute 30 seconds and 15 seconds prior to expiring on the candidate's time. With those housekeeping rules done, we can now start. Mr. Keefe won the coin toss, and his, so he'll go first. And the question is, why do you want to be Mayor of Revere? And you'll have uh, two minutes. Thank you. Starting now. I want to be mayor because I want to continue the work that I started four months ago. I want to be an ambassador for our city and champion all that is good about our community, not just disparage it for political gain. Jen and I settled in Revere and raised our family here. Our son Patrick begins his senior year at Revere High in just a matter of days. And our daughter Adriana, Revere High class of 2021, looks forward to the day when she graduates college and returns to Revere as an educator. This has inspired my desire and confidence to lead Revere into the future. And I see it as a bright future, full of opportunity. Yes, our city's progress comes with challenges, but it does, not good, it does no good to just complain. I want to be mayor to continue our progress while we tackle the issues that come with it. I want the mayor's work, not just the title. And the past four months proved that I am fit for the job. I want to be mayor to lead our city its path on the prosperity that has seen our beloved Revere Beach change from parking lots to a desirable residential and commercial neighborhood. I want to be, neighbor, I want to be mayor to shepherd the transformation of Suffolk Downs and advocate for the rapid construction of a new Revere High School. I want to be mayor and let every one of our residents and everyone who visits our city and know that City Hall regards them with respect and a hearty welcome. And I want to be married because I believe I have the experience, the common sense, and the commitment to continue to the job I've done since April and lead the way into Revere's future. Thank you. Thank you. Next candidate is Steve Longley. 
My name is Steve Morabito. I'm running for mayor because I love this city. I'm a son of Italian immigrants. I grew up in this city. I went to school here, played Little League baseball here, graduated from Revere High School, and later went on to get my business degree from Salem State College. After college, I decided and I chose to come back here and live here and buy a home with my partner, Rich. For the past 25 years, I've worked in the private sector, managing people, budgets, and operations. And I served as your city councilor at large for the last 10 years, representing all of Revere. I have a proven track record of getting things done for our residents and standing up for the people of our community who don't have a voice. In this campaign, I've knocked on 3,000 doors, and here's what I've heard. Revere is unaffordable. Revere families can't afford childcare. Seniors are being priced out of the very same neighborhoods that they help build. People don't feel safe with the violence at Revere Beach. Parents fear their children are not getting the access to education they deserve. Climate change is threatening much of our city. There is no plan to address traffic, and development without community input is out of control. We have a lot of challenges, sure, but I am hopeful because with the right leadership, Revere can thrive. Revere voters deserve a candidate who will put them first, not political insiders or campaign funders. It's time for putting an end to insider deals and pay to play. Revere, I look forward to being your next mayor, and tonight I look forward to sharing my plans with you on being the next mayor. Thank you. Thank you. This is one of the most consequential local municipal elections that we've ever seen, as it will map out the future for our community as it pertains to development, schools, and public safety. I am running for the thousands of Revere residents who are fed up with developers who come to Revere, turn a quick profit, and return to their bedroom communities before one more large-scale development is built or one more variance is granted I will bring the staffing levels of our police, fire, and standby ambulance service where it needs to be. I'm running for mayor to address the terrible traffic caused by this overdevelopment. This will be done in a multi-pronged approach working with state agencies, our state delegation, and our own Revere Police Traffic Division. I'm running for mayor to support our parents and children who deserve top-notch schools focused on learning and student safety, where teachers are respected and not intimidated by kids who are set on disrupting classrooms. Attendance and discipline need to matter. I will also open discussions with organizations like the YMCA and Boys and Girls Club to bring more activities and after-school programs to Revere. Our residents want safe streets. Public safety is not optional. I will implement walking patrols, bike patrols, and additional neighborhood police substations. We need a department that is fully staffed and once again proactive, not reactive. Our taxpayers deserve financial stability. Our taxes are up and so is our municipal budget. It took us 100 years to get to $167 million, and now in the last eight years, we're almost at $267 million. This unprecedented spending needs to stop. For our seniors who deserve our care and attention, they need an affordable community with, men with many more transportation options, discount days at local stores and restaurants, and various additional social outlets to enjoy. And for our municipal employees, they will come to work without fear of threats and intimidation. I'm running to give you all the best quality of life possible. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. The next speaker, the next speaker is Jerry Visconti. I first, I first want to thank the Chamber and the Journal for hosting this event, as well as the residents for tuning in tonight. I'm often asked, Jerry, why do you want to be mayor? It's a thankless job. It'll take time away from your family, and it's impossible to make everyone happy. And I say to myself, they're absolutely correct. I'm running for mayor because I genuinely believe 
that I can make the positive change that this city so desperately needs. The next four years in Revere can't be the same as the last 12 years. I'm the only choice for change or nothing will change in the city. I grew up in a union household. I watched my parents overcome challenges as immigrants, working hard and sacrificing to give me and my brothers an opportunity for a better life. They showed us that the su success is achieved through determination, perseverance, and hard work. And they taught us that our character is reflected in the respect that we show others. The decisions we make during this next administration will affect our quality of life for decades to come. That's why I'm running for mayor. Our campaign is about new vision and new leadership. And as an active member in our community, on the school committee and now on the council, I've been a strong advocate for transparency and accountability, fighting on behalf of all of our residents. I understand the struggles of our working class families and our concerned parents. I know the hardship inflation is imposing on all of us, especially our seniors, and I feel the frustration of our taxpayers. I'm running for mayor because I believe I'm the right candidate at the right time with the right vision to lead us forward. So tonight, I humbly ask for your vote on September 19th to begin making the change this city needs to move Thank us forward. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Jerry. Next part of the debate uh, is going. The forum will be on questions. You will each have 90 seconds to answer the question, and then after which, every, after everyone has answered this question, there will be an additional two, two minutes and 30 seconds for you to either expound on your answer or what the other candidates have said. So the the question is on the economy and development, and the question is. What are the key components of your economic development plan? And the first one to speak on this will be Steve Morabito. Thank you. You know, it's critically important that Revere has a thriving economic engine and that we are supporting our local businesses and small business owners. A strong local economy helps property taxes stay down and provide better services and amenities for our residents. But let me be clear about something. Real estate development is not the only way for our economy to grow. In fact, development in Revere has spiraled out of control. And Revere residents are the ones feeling the impact. Everything we do, we must ensure that we are keeping Revere affordable. I am the only candidate to support inclusionary zoning which will make Revere more affordable for renters and first-time home buyers. We need to make sure that all development is done with a robust community process. When development happens, it must enhance the public good and create affordable opportunities for our working families and retirees. I am the only candidate to sign a pledge to not accept money from developers in this mayoral race. The frustration levels among Revere residents are palpable, and they see their neighborhoods transforming without adequate con consideration for ne their needs and concerns. Revere residents must be able to trust the development process is fair and Th prioritizes Steve, transparency, community thank input. You. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, the next speaker will be Dan Rizzo, and again, you have 90 seconds. Thank you. Um, well, as the only person standing here right now that has been elected mayor, I am happy and proud to say that during my four years, we created 600 private sector jobs. And we did that by working with investors who wanted to come into our city, who wanted an environment that was good to do business in. And we made sure of that. We did not go out to try and attract the 3,000 residential units that we've seen over these last eight years crop up across our city and bring nothing but traffic and profit to the developer alone. We wanted our city to rise with our level of economic development, and that's why we focused on commercial development. In fact, 
During my tenure as mayor, we brought in more revenue through commercial uh, new growth than we did residential. That demonstrates my commitment to the type of development that I want to see occur here in our city. We have had it up to here with residential development. We cannot tolerate any more. And it's interesting because a lot of the candidates running for mayor right now talk about traffic and it's become a self-fulfilling prophecy because the, these, this is all happening as a result of permits that have been granted here in this city. It needs to stop and my, my approach is gonna be the same as it was to bring in investors that are interested in what Revere wants, not what they want. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rizzo. The next speaker will be Jerry Visconti. Thank you. Our city has come too far too fast. It's been a free-for-all for residential developers for the past eight years. We currently have an increasing population that live here, work from home, but play and spend their money elsewhere. The right balance of urban planning development is the live, work, play model. That's the basis of our vision, and that's going forward. But we also have a three-prong approach. We need to encourage and engage with neighborhood associations early in the planning stage. We need to begin listening to the residents first and not the residential developers. We need to do a better job mitigating the effects of these projects to our community, which means negotiating funding from the developers. And finally, we really need to concentrate on commercial <coughs> development. That is the key, and that's what we need to do to pivot and change the structure of our community now. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. The next speaker will be Patrick Keith. Thank you. There's, there, there are many different approaches to development, and uh, to, to have anyone up here and suggest that they stood in the way of residential development would be false. Everyone plays a part in it. Everyone on the city council, especially members of the city council that have been in elected office for over 20 years. Revere has been a growing city for many, many years. We have to make sure we take each parcel and each plan that comes in front of us with its own merit, not a broad brush approach. Revere has become very popular for many people, not just residential development. We've seen commercial development in the last few years, and I do intend on continuing to make that a big component. Just this year alone, we're going to receive over $3 million in hotel revenues and $1 million in restaurant revenues. That's more than double than we've ever seen in our history. The Suffolk Downs redevelopment, which I attended many meetings, and some people attended zero of the meetings, is going to have 50% commercial development on that site. The Boston side is, go is looking to get 100% housing, 80 to 100% housing. Revere negotiated 50%. I was the city council president when that happened. One last portion when it comes to residential development. Ward 4 was where I ma based my home and as a city council over the last seven years. We've only granted in the ZBA one parcel that was more than two units. Across the city, city councilors at large never championed against a lot of these ZBA approvals that they so, so truly think that they uh, are against. So I, I'd like to have you take a look into that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Keith. Now each candidate will have two minutes and 30 seconds to expound upon their answer to this question or what they heard. And the first one to speak will be Steve Maravito. Once again, I'm the only candidate to sign a pledge to not accept money from revered developers in that industry. The frustration levels among residents, as I said before, are palpable as they see their neighborhoods transforming without adequate consideration for their needs and concerns. Okay? Together, we should set an example of principal leadership and ensure that the upcoming election truly represents the will and aspiration of the residents. I am confident by standing by this united and commitment pledge that my colleagues will not sign because one of my candidates on here have taken $40,000 from the real estate sector in less than four months. So we need to look at this and 
residents have to say, listen, whose interest are you going to serve? You know Steve Morabito is going to serve your interest because I'm tying in my hands behind my back, not taking money from developers. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker will be Dan Rizzo. Thank you. Um, so I noticed the uh, I noticed that there was a comment made about people that have been here for 20 years and uh, talking about apartments. I maybe he missed the part when I said in the last eight years 3,000 units have been built, and, th and that's a fact. That's you know. And I can cite votes, and I can cite projects, and I have them all right here, but I'm not going to bore you with that, because you want to hear about what we're going to do. Um, you'll notice, and Councilor Morabito actually made the statement, he's not taking any money from developers, I haven't taken any money from developers. You have to look at what a candidate says and what they do, okay? And, you know, when, you know, when you make when you make it part of your everyday life to solicit contributions from people who are focused, laser focused on residential development, you can't stand here and call everybody else out on it. Now, as I said before, my focus has been and will continue to be focusing on commercial economic development, commercial economic growth. You can go back and look at the figures during my term as mayor, our commercial uh, revenue, our commercial investment, outweighed residential investment during those four years. All of our new growth was geared toward that. There was one project that started under Mayor Ambrosino, and that was the uh, Wonderland TOD project. That was slated for only 800 apartment units. 800, not 3,000, 800. And that was from the Revere Street side of, of Ocean Ave and led all the way to Wonderland train station. That was a TOD project that was introduced by, at that time, Governor Romney, adopted by Mayor Ambrosino, and supported by the City Council, and we did support that. And I continue to support that, never, never uh, thinking that you'd see what you see down there on Revere Beach right now. To have residents in our Point of Pines, in our Riverside, along the boulevard, double their commute just to get to Broadway is outrageous. And there are people that are running for mayor right now that have been part of the problem and not part of the solution. I want to be, I want to go back and be part of the solution that leads toward growth in our community when it's controlled growth and it makes sense for us. That is the only way we're going to see any growth in this community under my administration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rizzo. The next speaker will be Jerry Visconti. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's, it's no secret that overdeve the overdevelopment is the number one issue on the minds of residents during this election. You know, like uh, my colleague said, we need to pivot and actually start looking with a vision, okay? And that's the vision of the live, work, play. We, the, the, the past eight years, has shown that there has been no vision. We have overpopulated this community and that has become a problem for the next mayor. For the past eight years, residents have taken a back seat to the free-for-all of developers, pushed by the previous administration. My colleague to the end here has voted 99% on the previous administration's agenda. And I want to know, I want the voters to know that the agenda of yes from his kickoff speech is yes to apartments, yes to more traffic, and yes to developers coming before residents. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Visconti. Patrick Keith will be the last, will be the next speaker. Well, thank you. It looks like I, I could tell that there's a little bit of a target over here. So I will say yes. The agenda is yes. We want to make sure that we're open for business, all sorts of business. Of course, not just housing, uh, but we want to talk about commercial development. 100 Salt is going to have 500,000 square feet of biotech and manufacturing facility. Suffolk Downs. <clears throat> 
uh, uh, Squire Road Amazon investment, $28 million. Link Logistics, 44 acre, just is gonna be taking down the global petroleum site besides the one a corridor. That's gonna create hundreds, and th hundreds of, jo of jobs and millions of dollars in tax revenue. La Quinta on Squire Road, and I will continue to go on. We can all sit here and pretend that everyone has been, had nothing to do with development in the city. Again, that is the most disingenuous statement we can talk about. Everyone on this stage, including myself, has ha had their hand in that. But what it comes down to is being consistent. And that's what you'll see me. I'm the most consistent candidate here. I'm not going to sit up here and give you all lip service because every one of them has taken uh, developer money. Every one of them has done exactly the same thing that they're trying to accuse others of making. It's, it's, you're not that... Um, you are not that ill-informed. You just have to look. Each one of them has taken just all of the same de developer money over the last years. All of a sudden, the campaign year, they decide to have a change of heart. That's disingenuous, and I'll keep it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Keefe. We move now to the next question, which will be on crime. Uh, and Riz, Mr. Rizzo will be the first one, the speaker. And the question is, how would you support local law enforcement and combat crime in the city of Revere? You don't have to look very far to see that crime has risen in our community. On almost every street in every neighborhood that I've traveled through, someone is telling me about a car that's been broken into, property being stolen, or drugs being sold nearby. In fact, I had somebody ask me just recently, why isn't the Revere Journal printing the police blotter anymore? I really don't know why, but I think that should be something that they should possibly reconsider because people would then understand the ramifications of all the new development, all the new people that have come into this community. Morale in the police department is an all-time low. We need to reorganize if we're going to have the best level of services to our neighborhood. Years ago, we experimented with a four and four schedule to give police officers in particular, shot at having a half normal life as, a as opposed to split shifts, but changes in command rescinded that and this was a mistake and it will be corrected. We are severely undermanned and need additional officers as soon as possible. We can get there using new recruits and laterals from other departments. We need to re-implement walking patrols, bike patrols, and <laughs> additional substations. We need to increase our drug unit. Our drug problem is not getting better, it's getting worse. In 2015, we had 19 overdose fatalities. In 2022, we had 30. This is unacceptable. We need to get drugs, and in particular, drug dealers off our streets. Uh, we need more traffic enforcement to keep our streets safer and get our ambulance service up to where we need to be as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, we will have a plan. You know, after the shootings on the beach, it was evident that Councilor Keith didn't have a plan. The Councilor's response, and I'm going to quote this, is there's nothing we can do, there's no plan we can ever have that can prevent anything. Till this day, I still want to know what that means. But meanwhile, crime statistics show that 80% of the cities in the country are safer than Revere. It's clearly a failure in our leadership. My promise is to devote attention to resources essential to supporting our first responders and addressing the challenges they face every day. We need to recognize and respect the tireless work and service these men and women deliver. But we also need to do some obvious things. We need to increase manpower in all sectors of public safety, increase technology, provide necessary equipment and tools and training to help them succeed. We need to work with surrounding agencies, as, such as eight, um, state police, MBTA police, and DCR, to create a task force that will work collaboratively for a common goal, and that's keeping our residents safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Visconti. The next speaker will be Patrick Key. Thank you very much. Uh, I hate to break it to everyone, but crime is actually down. And I know that doesn't sell newspapers. <laughs> I, know, I know it doesn't sell newspapers, no offense to my friends at the Journal of the Advocate, but that's just the facts. We have the stats right here. 
However, safety is a serious perception, and it does affect our quality of life. We don't want our residents to live in fear. One crime is too many. We want to make sure they see our team in full force, protecting the neighborhoods and the roadways. That's why I just initiated a responsible roadways initiative to help curb speeding and traffic-related incidents. More often in our city, we are concerned with traffic incidents and speeding. We just put two speed humps up in our city, and we have four more to go, and we have a plan in place to continue to go further throughout the entire, the, the, my, my first four years in administration. When it comes to police stats, we just put 116 officers into the budget. That's more than we've had in the his, his, history of our city. We have four new cadets that just came out, six more coming out soon, and the Revere Police Department is going to have my back. If it comes down to morale, I understand. There was a schedule that was very, uh, very appreciated by our police officers. And I know that their job's harder now today than it ever has been. And recruiting good talent has been harder than it ever has been. So just know that I will work with our police department. But going around and politicizing and telling people they're going to be chief, and that does nothing but hurt our police department. It's actually a public safety issue. That will never happen under, um, under my administration. I promise you that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Key. The next candidate will be Stephen Maravito. Thank you. We shouldn't just talk about crime. We should all, always be talking about public health and public safety. As city councilor, I invested in programs and services to combat substance use abuse. I proudly supported the creation of Office of Recovery Services and voted in support of funding the important work that this office has done over the years. As mayor, I understand the troubles in the police department and the low morale. And as mayor, my first task will be to do a top-down assessment and do whatever I can to boost morale, not just in the police department, but each and every department throughout the city. And we, listen, we all talk about crime, but we only can do what's enforceable, right? This is why we need to focus on the hiring, and that will be a prior priority of mine as mayor as well. So we need to get the numbers up on the police station. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moravito. Now, each candidate will have two and a half minutes to go ahead and expound on their answers if they choose. And leading us off will be Dan Rizzo. So, I've, one thing I've learned about public safety over the years, people don't necessarily care about statistics. They care about how they feel in their neighborhoods. And if you walk around the various neighborhoods of the city of Revere, you hear their stories. So we can talk statistics all day long, which don't get me wrong, statistics are important, but you need to know what's going on. A lot of crimes now are going unreported because of the staffing levels. A lot, of, uh, a lot of calls for service aren't even being responded to because there's something more important going on. This, there's different reasons why these statistics are skewed right now. But I can tell you this, in my conversations with people across the city, they are not happy with the level of service that our police department has been able to provide them. And that's why I say, I am going to change that. When I was mayor, when I was elected mayor, we took it from an 84 uh, member police department to 104 members in just four years. I hired 30 new police officers. We backfilled 10 and created 20 new, uh, new positions. That did result in a 20% reduction in crime, and that was documented through our first ever annual report that we had. And that has to come back now, too, an annual report that can tell us how many calls for service have been responded to, what these calls are, and how they were resolved. We need to work with our residents uh, to make sure that if they have a problem, they know they're going to be taken care of. And we need more communication. Council of Visconti talked about the incident Memorial Day on Revere Beach, and I happened to talk to a couple of state troopers that told me there's a complete lack of communication. That was never the case when I was mayor. We worked with the FBI, the DEA, the North Shore Gang Task Force, the state police, MBTA police, they were all involved and there was dialogue, there was communication to keep our community safe. Somewhere along the way, we've lost that. And trust me when I tell you, that will come back because as has been the case for me during my entire political life, public safety is always priority number one for me and it will continue to be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rizzo. 
The next speaker will be Jerry Visconti. You know, our, our public safety uh, departments have a very difficult job. And unfortunately, they haven't been supported. And uh, it's serious when morale is really at its all-time low. And you talk to many police officers and really people in our community, and they don't feel safe. Officers are not happy going to work. That's a problem. It doesn't help when threats are made. We talk about morale, okay? How can we boost morale when our elected officials are making threats to public safety? Finally, we have to change the model of how we select our leaders, public safety leaders. We should select them based on qualifications not because he or she is knocking on a door for a particular candidate. I believe that anyone that feels that they are qualified to be a chief, that they should put their name in the hat and get vetted out, just like I'm getting vetted out for the mayor's job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Visconti. The next speaker will be Patrick Keith. Thank, thank you very much. And I want to reiterate, one crime is too many. And the perception of public safety is, is important because it, it affects your, your health. But I want to stay, state once again, statistics. Don't let the facts get in the way of the truth. Those are the facts. We are a safer community than everyone wants to perceive because it's the narrative. If you want to be an elected officer, you want to be an elected official, you have to tell everyone how bad the city is. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to help fix the city. And going around politicizing, politicizing our police department is a public danger. It kills the morale of our police department. It does nothing good. That's, we don't pick names out of a hat. The most qualified person should be in charge of the police department. Simple as that. That person will never knock a door with me. That person will never go out and, and walk around and tell everyone what they're going to do. That person is best served inside the office taking care of the police department. Simple as that. I will not politicize that police department. I vowed not to do that. I would love, I would love to see our, our other electeds up here to do the same thing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McKee. And Steve Maravito will be the next speaker. So let's be clear. Statistics and surveys can be skewed to what you're looking for. Let's just keep that in mind. Um, one thing I want to circle back on when talking about public health and public safety is some of the things I would like to do, because I'm about solutions as your next mayor. Creating a mental health crisis line. Instances of people experiencing mental health emergency has skyrocketed over the last few years, especially since the pandemic. We need trained social workers and mental health clinicians who are part of the public safety response team. And that is something I will implement as mayor. Also, one of my colleagues mentioned Revere Beach. I will create a Revere Beach community task force which will act as a liaison between local police, state police, city hall, and local businesses. Right now, one of the greatest issues are the jurisdictional um, jurisdiction between the city and state roads. So I think it's very important to be online, set proactive measures, and have a code red system when 15 billion people are down the beach and we're not doing anything about it until after gunshots go off. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morabito. The last question in this section deals with education. And the question is, what is your vision for the future of education in Revere? And Mr. Visconti will be the first speaker. Thank you. First things first, when parents are afraid to send their children to school, we have a problem. Our city faces significant challenges maintaining safe settings for our children's education. 80% of our 8th graders 
are currently applying to the VOC. That's astounding. We need to offer more vocational classes, implement and enforce a zero tolerance policy for violence and drug use, and open the line of communications between school administrators, parents, and teachers. It's our responsibility to ensure all our students are given the opportunity to learn and grow in a safe and supportive environment. We also need to support our teachers instead of ignoring them. They have a difficult job as it is in our community. There's no reason there should be fear of retribution if they speak up on an issue that is being handled incorrectly. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker will be Patrick Keith. Thank you. There's no one closer to the work in our schools than myself. I have both, both my children revere publicly, publicly school educated. I'm a pu proud publicly school educated person, and I believe it firmly in our Revere School District. Now I know we have to work on some of the facilities, and yes, I know post-pandemic learning was a real challenge. We learned a really important lesson, distracted learning. It really killed our kids. We saw children not knowing how to behave. We saw children looking to hurt themselves. We saw children getting lost. That happened for three years during the pandemic. When I showed up to fight to get our kids to go back to school, none of my colleagues up here supported me, none of them. And we see the, we see the, the, the fallout of that today. And then just like that, they're going to put these children in another distracted learning environment for five years while they build a massive high school next to an elementary school, a middle school, and a high school. That's going to hit these kids for five more years. What they just did to them for three years, they're going to do to for, for five. I'm the only one that has kids in our Revere school system. I believe in our school system. I know there needs to be work, but I will be there, and I will show up. I showed up to all the city, city council meetings, and I show up to all the school committee meetings. I don't know if that's the same for everyone on the stage tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. King. Thank, thank you. The next speaker will be Steve Maravito. Listen, I took the politics out of the high school situation. I voted in both locations, okay, because I know we need a new high school. Because who's going to suffer? Our students, our teachers. Our, we have an issue retaining educators. Who wants to work in a high school that won't be accredited? How are we going to retain and, and maintain our teachers? So that's one thing. I'm a proponent. My candidates to the left and right, they can play politics they, won't, uh, they want with the children. I won't play with the children's future at all. Um, one thing, every teacher and parent I talk to talk about the struggles that many kids are facing with social media, bullying, and the impact of the pandemic. We need to be investing in more resources in comprehensive and social and emotional wellness. We need licensed therapists in every school and guidance counselors with updated training. I'm the only candidate who is calling for the creation of universal pre-K. Right now, parents are paying on average 25,000 per child for early childhood care. This is breaking the backs of so many families and I can't even imagine how single parents are staying afloat. We can afford for this, we can afford to pay for this, we must afford to pay for this because our kids are going to fall behind if we don't. And uh, this is only gonna be a place for the wealthy. Thank you. The next speaker will be Dan Rousseau. So going back to my four year term as mayor when I was elected, um, we had, many of you might remember, the distinction of holding the number one high school in the entire country by the National Center for Urban School Transformation. We received a $3 million Sally May grant for our FLIP Learning Initiative. All of our schools, which it, back at that time uh, were rated on, a, on a, a scale of one through four or one through five, 
were all level one and two, the only urban school district to earn such a distinction that the governor came out and paid special recognition to our district. We started JROTC, which spun off the Snow Angels that's been able to help so many senior citizens and disabled people. We built the New Hill School, and we built the new Harry Della Russo Stadium, largely with grant money, and three new Little League fields for after-school activities for our children. We need to implement a discipline and attendance policy that makes sense in all of our schools. Currently, a student can be out countless days and still pass. Our kids go to school to learn. Our teachers go to school to teach. We need to focus on their safety and support their efforts to give them the best education possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Russo. The next speaker will be Jerry Visconti, and he'll have two minutes and 30 seconds. Thank you. Um, first, I want to clear one, more, one thing. is uh, I'm a parent first, and two of my children go to public schools, and the other two go to Catholic school. So I do what's in the best interest of my children first. That being put aside, the construction of the new high school is probably the biggest investment this city will make. We can't afford to make a mistake. We must be transparent with risks, financing, and timeliness of this project. And as mayor, I will work closely with my administration committed to providing the facilities our students deserve in the most fiscally responsible way. I want to make something clear about the high school. The previous administration was not transparent with all the information. In essence, they lied. Construction cost increased by $120 million. Now, I'm going to say, I, last year, I was heavily involved. I've been heavily involved in all the meetings, council president and on all the subcommittees, on quite a few subcommittees as well. You couple that $120 million increase with the potential cost of a lawsuit of over a hundred million dollars for the cost of the land, it'll bankrupt the city. And I wasn't going to put my name on it. A good leader, a sign of a good leader, is to be able to assess new information that, has been, that hasn't been provided and now has changed. It needs, in order for that to happen, you have to reassess the information and not just be a rubber stamp for the administration to try to make them happy. That's not a good sign of a leader. So in essence, I was not willing to put the residents' financing and their money at risk. And I'm happy and proud of that decision I made. Thank you, Mr. Visconti. The next speaker will be Patrick Keith. Thank you. It's pay now or pay later. The Wonderland site was the best school, it was the best building, and it was going to be the best investment. By not acting on that site, we showed no vision for 10 years down the road when we need a central middle school as our school district continues to expand. What's going to happen on the Wonderland site when, per, per the attorney, he wants to put substantial residential development. So everyone here is up, up against substantial residential development, but we want to have Wonderland stay for residential development. I'm not sure which it is. The new high school, if they do build it on the current site, you're going to lose ball fields for years, soccer fields for years. Where are you going to build those? Those are going to cost a lot more money. And the school, the build alone is going to be a lot more expensive. And then the last and most important piece that you cannot quantify is the distracted learning, is the five years of disruption. We're going to kill those kids, and you're going to do it, and that's what you want to do. I'll gladly invest in our children. You can't quantify that number any day of the week. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Keith. 
The next speaker will be Steve Morabito. Yeah, so this is the first I'm hearing of apartments going in Wonderland. Um, this is why I think the pledge and the candidate should sign the pledge to not take money from developers. Because at the end of the day, the mayor gives a nod, nod of approval if a development is going into the city before it goes to the council. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's what happens. So let's switch the topic. Let's talk about our teachers. We know how hard of a job they work. That teachers have been through hell and back the past three years since the pandemic. Teachers spend on average $530 of their own money on classroom supplies. We need to direct more dollars into the classroom, not at bureaucracy. And that's something I'm looking to ensure as ne your next mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morabito. The next speaker will be Dan Rizzo. Thank you. Uh, just to touch on a few things that I didn't have time uh, based on the guidelines here to talk about education. There's an awful lot to talk about. We need to invest more money into pre-K. This last administration spent close to $30 million of COVID APA money on raises, jobs, and other things that mattered little to the people of this community. Whatever they may have left needs to be utilized to, have, to help families in need in our community. And one of those things, I believe, is helping to fund a broader pre-K program. As we look at the new high school, I mean, where do you start? You know, it's great to virtual signal and say, I care about kids. I don't think there's one candidate up here who doesn't care about the future of the kids. And why building a high school behind an existing building is such a disruption, I don't know why. There's many communities across the Commonwealth that have added on to their school while the kids were in the school buildings. So again, it's the scare tactics that you hear all the time. There's litigation on that site that, uh, you know, that was failed to be mentioned. Litigation where, where, uh, where the city is now entangled in a lawsuit where the former owners want up to $100 million from our city for that land. The tax loss of revenue, the, the, the potential for revenue on that site is limitless. It could probably pay for the high school. And now we find out environmental issues. But of course, that's not, that's not talked about. You know, everything happens, they go out, they spend $30 million on a piece of land to find out later that we have environmental issues. Everything has been done backwards and this needs to change. And as Councilor Morabito alluded to, to talk about apartments that's crazy. If you're going to be a mayor, then you have to be in charge. And it is not what the developer comes in and tells you what they're going to build. It's what you say on behalf of your residents. So that's the way it's going to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rizzo. That concludes the first part of the forum. We now move to the second part, which will be a series of 12 questions. Each candidate will have two minutes to answer three of the questions. The questions will be drawn out of the, whatever that contraption is. <laughs> and Niles and Gertrude will be taking over this part of the forum. Uh, thank you. So we're going to go in order here. So this first question from the community round of questions is going to be for Candidate Keefe. Candidate Keefe, how do you see the future of the Revere 311 program? Uh, thank you. That's a great question. 311 is a program that takes tens of thousands of calls each year, whether it's email, you call the, the, call the line, or you do it through an app. I like to use the app. I put in hundreds of these requests every month. The future is to continue to expand on the technology and make sure that everyone knows how to use it. We do have some works 
to make sure that when tickets are closed out, the communication is continuing to happen. That's one area of opportunity that I know that I have faith in our department heads to make sure that that's being better communicated throughout our, throughout our community. When people put in a request for a pothole, or if they put in a request for a, a tree issue, they need to get some, some form of a response, and we owe that to them. So utilizing the updated technology and making sure we keep 301, because it is a successful program, and working on making sure that we make the final tweaks will be something I'll continue to do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this next question is gonna be for candidate Morabito. Candidate Morabito, what will be done regarding school funding to prevent the deterioration of school buildings in the city? So this goes back to what I said earlier, right? If we wanna retain teachers, provide them with the tools they need for students to succeed, we need to do everything we can. What I would do is I would take a comprehensive look at the budget and see what the cost savings are and go from there. And that's the only fair answer I can give you. Thank you, Candidate Morabito. The next question will be for Candidate Rizzo. Candidate Rizzo, one of Riviera's greatest strengths is the, its diversity. How would your administration serve residents of all demographics and cultures? Well, I, I think that's a great question, and I think it's what makes our community great. Um, one of the things, and I'll share a quick story. Um, when I first ran for mayor, um, I uh, was at a meeting down off of Shirley Avenue, and there were uh, three or four Cambodian um, uh, men that I was speaking with. Uh, one had gone through Revere High School, the other one had gone through Revere High School and then on to the military, and another one had just lived in the area for a little while. And I asked them at that time, you know, how do you feel about living in Revere? And they said, one of them in particular really struck me. He said, I graduated Revere High School. I have a son in Revere High School right now, and I still don't feel part of this community. And that really struck me, and that led me to create the Office of New Revere Residents, which for some reason was disbanded. But what the Office of New Revere Residents did was it pulled together members of our community from all different backgrounds, all different, all different ethnicities, all different races, all different religions, so that we would meet on a monthly basis and talk about how we can do outreach to make people feel part of our community. We are one big family, and that's how I'm gonna go forward as mayor treating all of us like we are one family, one community, and I will reinstitute that Office of New Revere Residents the day I get sworn in. Thank you. Thank you, Candidate Rizzo. This next question is gonna be for Candidate Visconti. Candidate Visconti, if elected, how will you continue to advance racial equity in city government? Well, diversity, you know, as a son um, of immigrants from Italy, I can appreciate that question. Our, the unique diversity of our community is one of the greatest strengths of our city. It's not enough to say that we welcome all. We must follow through on the promise and actually work to create community that is truly welcoming. And we need to make sure that we treat everybody the same. Okay, that is the most important and that is what the fabric of our community is all about. Thank you. Thank you to Candidate Rizzo. Excuse me, Visconti. I'm going to pass this on to our next moderator, Gertrude. We'll be asking the next four questions. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. This first question is for um, candidate 
Patrick O'Keefe. Patrick Keefe, how would you work to continue to expand the recreation offerings available in Revere? Oh, you, oh, recreation. Yes. Okay, great. Well, How would you work to continue <laughs> to yep. expand the recreation offerings available in Revere? You know, I have, I have an un unbelievable faith in our recreation department. Um, our good friend Mike Hinojosa runs the entire department, along with Charlie Jufrida. We have a really good team in place. Recently, we uh, took progress of this wellness center down on Charger Street. When I came in as acting mayor, I took it and went from zero to 60 overnight. And you can talk to Mike Hinojosa, you can talk to Charlie, you can talk to the team there. We're poised to open that site really soon. But the recreation opportunities to con need to continue to expand. We need to have programming year round, indoor and outdoor. We, mu we, we have instilled making sure that our gymnasiums, all of these school gyms that we have, they're so beautiful. We need to make sure kids can go in there year round after school and have good programming. I'm a, I'm a coach. I coach Revere Pop Warner football, Revere Youth Baseball and softball for many years. I even coach Revere, Revere Basketball, don't know much about it. My son coaches, my daughter coaches. There's no one here that touches recreation more than myself. And it's something that I'll continue to invest in and making sure we have the fields accessible for every, all of our residents. Soccer becomes one of the most popular sports in Revere and we're limited in our soccer space. And even more so, we're gonna be even more limited when we build a school on one of our only soccer fields. We're gonna to have to fix that. And I'll be very hands-on in making sure that our recreation department has all the resources needed. Thank you, Mr. O'Keefe. Um, the next question is for Steve Morabito. Why do taxes and water rates continue to rise despite the number of new construction projects and what can be done about it? I just love getting that question. So let's, let's just say first, we're under a consent decree um, from a lot of illegal work that was done years and years, long before this guy was in politics. So you're talking about a long time ago. So, so we're paying the repercussions. <laughs> so, so, so we're, are you going to subtract time from that laughter? I wanted to give the audience a little uh, yeah. laughter because everyone was so intense for a little while. But, but no, honestly, um, we're, it's part of a consent degree. Once um, CDM Smith is done with the work, they tell us, they tell us, this guy may know more information, but they sell, tell us water rates should go down. But what I would do as mayor is I would take a comprehensive look at the budget, review it, and see if there's any cost savings that we can allocate to residents to reduce and relieve their taxes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morabito. The next question is for you, Mr. Dan Rizzo. What do you think should go at the Wonderland site, and would it include a housing component? Well, thank you for that question. And, uh, but before I go on, I really feel the need to respond to Councilor Morabito. I promise not to hold your youth and inexperience against you. That will not be part of my agenda. Wow. Um, so, I think, Fair game. I, wow. th I think basically, um, I think basically that's, you know, first of all, we need to untangle ourselves from this litigation that we're in. And that's going to take some time. Because unfortunately, the people who voted to, 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 you know, without testing the site, without understanding the ramifications that could come from it, it wound up in court. And many of us knew that up front. So now we're defending ourselves against upwards of a hundred million dollar settlement. We're going to have to figure how to untangle ourselves from that. At that point, what I'd like to do is get together with our economic development team and put together an RFQ to attract developers, not just from across the country, from across the world. When I was mayor, we had two economic development summits that were highly successful and we were on the brink of doing some really, really good things prior to me leaving office. 
I want to try to reinstitute that, bring back these economic development summits, put out an RFQ on that site, and I will say this, I am not afraid to uh, implement tax increment financing. We did that with Market Basket, it's been highly successful, it reinvigorated Northgate Shopping Center, it was a great anchor tenant for down there, and they've done wonderful things down at that mall. This site is a valuable piece of property, and I think with the right developer and the right leadership in the mayor's office, we can do something really special down there that's going to benefit the residents of our community and not burden them with more apartments and more traffic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rizzo. And this last question um, is for you, Mr. Jerry Visconti. What do you believe is the most pressing issue the city currently faces? <laughs> There's a few of them. Um, unfortunately, we've been left with quite a few open items since uh, the departure of the previous mayor. And it's unfortunate that the next mayor has quite a, a big task on his hands. But I would have to say that the construction of the new high school is probably the biggest investment that we're going to have to make. And we can't afford to have it burden our taxpayers. So we have to do and finance this project in a way that will be fiscally responsible. This is probably the most important issue right now that the school, uh, that the city is facing. Thank you. Um, Amanda, to ask the next four questions. Thank you, Mr. Scott. All right, thank you. This question is from Mr. Patrick Keefe. How would you describe your management style and what does integrity mean to you? Thank you. Well, as, no, as noted, I worked in the private sector for pretty much my entire life, running large-scale organizations just recently, I left a $300 million organization with 2,500 employees. I went from the top, uh, pardon me, I went from the bottom to the top. Amanda, you worked with me. Your, your husband worked with me. A lot of people in Revere, because it's a hospitality-driven community, worked with me. And they saw exactly who I was. Every single day, I came in, I rolled up my sleeves, and I went to work. I brought more people up with me than bringing them down company went from 21 restaurants to 35 restaurants while I was there, from Boston to D.C., Atlanta, Virginia, New York, New Jersey, and so on. I learned worldly experiences with this company, and that's some of the things that I've taken back to my management style in City Hall. Day two in City Hall, my staff looked at me and they said, wow, you're up to speed. And not to discount the mayor's role, it's a really significant role, and it's definitely more people-driven. But co going into that office every single day, I asked one of our employees that's worked there for five administrations, and I said, what's the difference between me and George Colella and Bob Hass and Tom Ambrosino and Mayor Rigo and et cetera? She said, you have the best personality of every mayor of ever, any mayor I've ever worked for. That was a huge compliment to me, so I think that that's one of the, my great management strengths. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Key. All right, Mr. Steve Moravito. As mayor, what will you do to address infrastructure in Revere, more specifically to prevent flash flooding of streets and homes? Excellent, excellent. I like this question. So one thing we have to do as a city is we need to be leaders in environmental sustainability. That means using adaptive measures for green energy, um, getting green infrastructure, Sorry. No worries. Good. Can you repeat the question again? Yeah, of sorry course I can. That. Don't I be sorry at all. I distracted with that squeaky wheel. So. Was it no. infrastructure, right? 
It was. As mayor, what will you do to address infrastructure in Revere, more specifically to prevent flood flashing of the streets and homes? Excellent. So I think it's very important to, infrastructure is such a wide topic. It, go, it stems from building our parks, it stems from um, our water and sewer infrastructure, but what it all comes down to is development too, because development has a strain on so many different parts of our city. The sewer, crime, population, our infrastructure, um, but my, my plan for infrastructure is to make it sustainable and go green by adopting and adapting to green infrastructure measures. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. Let's see here, Mr. Dan Rizzo. What is your stance on the wheel abrader incinerator that pollutes the air and water in our city? They should not be operating. They should not be operating. Their permit, their permit expired long ago, and for whatever reason, the DEP is allowing them to operate. Um, we don't need an operation like that in an urban community. Um, it, th nothing good comes from it. You know, like I always say, you see that smoke coming out of the smokestack, and nobody's gonna tell me that's healthy for you. I don't care how many filters they have there. These things need to be out in an area where they're not gonna potentially harm somebody's health. There are too many people, in my opinion, that are getting sick, and I'm not blaming wheel abrader necessarily for that, but when you have suspect, when you, you know, something like that, just across the way from the Riverside and the people in the Point of Pines, that to me is a dangerous thing if we keep it going like that. And in my opinion, we need to relocate it and get it out of that area. Thank you, Thank you Dan. Thank you. Uh, and Mr. Jerry Visconti. How would your administration support nonprofits and small businesses in Revere? You know, as a small business owner in our community, we really need to do a better job with communication. So what I would um, propose is having um, quarterly meetings set up for business owners to come in and talk about their concerns and doing that through the chamber. I think communication is very important to see what they need to succeed. That's very important in our community. We also need to enhance and create more commercial development to bring in more businesses into our community. Thank you. We are now coming to the last section of the forum, which is the closing statement. Each candidate will have two minutes, and we ask the audience. We are actually going to change that to three minutes. We have extra time, and we'd like to give you guys the extra time to do your closing statement. You. So three minutes, OK? Thank you. You're welcome. That's good. OK. So the first speaker will be, and we ask the audience to wait till all the candidates have, are done uh, before applauding. Uh, the first candidate will be Patrick Keefe. <clears throat> thank you. And I want to thank the Revere Chamber, the Revere Journal, the City of Revere and our school department for hosting this forum tonight, and all the residents of Revere for joining me this evening. In January, the City Council, including three members who share this stage with me tonight, elected me as Council President. It was no secret that Governor Healy might appoint former Mayor Arrigo to a state-level job. When that happened, I accepted the Mayor's responsibilities. City government did not slow down, and we went to work. I realized quickly that the skills I had acquired in 20 years of professional experience managing a $300 million company with over 2,600 employees provided a valuable preparation to be Revere's chief executive. Acting requires action. In my first four weeks, we produced a $262 million budget that the City Council approved virtually untouched. I visited every school in the district twice to hear from our students and educators. I, I met with municipal leaders in all departments to get their candid viewpoints on how to improve constituent services. I filled important vacancies because I knew it was foolish to leave departments understaffed for eight months, which would have been a disservice to our residents and to our employees. 
Elected office is about service to our residents. This comes naturally to me. Service to my family and city has been a driving force for as long as I can remember. Whether it has been coaching youth sports or starting a food pantry during the pandemic. In January, I, called my fellow, I, I answered the call of my city councilors to be their president. In April, I answered the call of our city charter to step into the mayor's office. Acting mayor was never just a title. I took on the job and the work to make that sure that our city's government functions did not languish. That's the job I've been doing since April, and I seek election now to continue what we started four months ago. I encourage, I encourage you to have the same trust in me that my fellow councilors had in January, and I will continue to lead our great city with humility, dignity, honesty, and expertise. And I humbly ask for your support on September 19th, and thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Keith. The next candidate will be Steve Moravito. First, I would like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this, the Riviera Journal, the moderators, the panelists, the viewers on television, Revere TV, and all of you, the audience, for being here. Participation is encouraged, and it will be encouraged in my administration. You know, I also want to thank, I can't leave out my fellow candidates. I want to thank each and one of them. You know, we've served with one another. We all know each other. And while we may not always agree on everything and have different visions for Revere, we all respect one another and know that we are all vested in the city of Revere. But right now, Revere is at a crossroads. We are facing many challenges, but there is so much promise. We need a mayor who will be focused on making Revere more affordable. We need a mayor who will be put the needs of residents over the profits of developers. We need a mayor who will put an end to insider deals and pay to play. And we need someone with a proven record of bringing Revere together. This is what I've done for the past 10 years on the city council, and this is what I plan to do as your next mayor of Revere. I'm the only <coughs> candidate who has refused to take donations from real estate developers I'm the only candidate to support inclusionary zoning to create access to affordable home ownership and rental assistance. I have a decade of getting results done for the Revere residents, and I am an independent voice for the people who haven't had a voice in politics. Voters have a clear choice in this election. On September 9th, I kindly ask for your vote for the next Revere mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moravito. The next speaker will be Dan Rizzo. Thank you. Um, I want to thank all of you that are here tonight, including candidates that I see out here in the audience, as well as uh, supporters of my colleagues here on the stage. I'd like to thank Revere TV, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Revere Journal for sponsoring it. I'd also like to thank you, the residents, for giving me the honor and the privilege to serve you over these many years. I'm asking you to look at this mayor's race as a job interview. I ask you to compare our resumes. I'm a six-year veteran of the United States Navy, a graduate of Emanuel College, and have owned and operated my own business right here in the heart of our central business district for over 30 years. I've been mayor before and have been elected and re-elected to the city council numerous times. For me, there is no on-the-job training required. And despite what my opponents might tell you at the doors, my position has always been clear. When it comes to development, it needs to be in a controlled manner that matches the needs of our community. Everything needs to be considered, including traffic mitigation plans, levels of first responders, and considerations about the impact on our student population and infrastructure. When I was mayor, we invested in parks, playgrounds, little league fields, and a brand new Harry Del Russo Stadium, not thousands of apartment units. In fact, on September 23, 2015, I, pro I proposed a two-year moratorium on all large-scale developments so we could revamp our outdated zoning ordinances, and the City Council soundly rejected this moratorium and let it die in committee. I always like to say, well done is better than well said. 
I led our city through an unprecedented EF2 tornado, the worst winter in Massachusetts recorded history, and invested in commercial development creating hundreds of private sector jobs, not residential. I care about our city and will work as hard as I possibly can to deliver the best quality of life possible for each and every one of you. You have a choice. We can continue down the path we are currently on, or we can choose a different path that respects residents' rights to live a peaceful, happy, and productive life. I ask for your consideration and for your votes on Tuesday, September 19th, and again on November 7th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rizzo. The next speaker will be Jerry Visconti. I want to thank, again, the Chamber and the Journal for their efforts this evening. Like many of you, I'm tired of the empty promises. We can't solve the same old problems with the same old failed leaders. I'm running for mayor because the next four years in Revere can't be the same as the last 12 years. I'm the only choice for change or nothing will change in the city. I'm running for mayor not because I'm looking to settle old vendettas, and I'm definitely not looking to have the mayor's job handed to me in some backroom deal. I'm looking to do it the old-fashioned way, by earning your support. I only care what's in the best interest of the people of Revere. And if you're like me and you've had enough of the status quo, lack of vision, lack of transparency, lack of accountability, I ask you to join me. If you believe we need new leadership, someone with a track record of fiscal responsibility, setting higher standards, focused on execution, managing our resources effectively, I need you to get involved in our campaign. And if you believe we need new leadership, committed to helping our seniors, supporting our youth, protecting our community, I need you to help us deliver our message to the people of Revere. I'm not a politician running to be mayor. I'm a dad running to lead the city I love. I'm running to restore respect in the mayor's office. Why? Because I believe leadership is all about representing you. I'll always have your back, and I'm not going anywhere. I see people just like us willing to come together committed to building a stronger, more prosperous, more inclusive community for all, regardless of the background or political affiliation. I'm running for mayor because I know we can do better. I will bring the change in culture so desperately needed in that corner office. So I humbly ask for your support and your vote on September 19th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Visconti. And that concludes the forum for tonight. Thank you to the candidates and to the residents viewing at home and here uh, for joining us. And thank you to Revere TV and the Revere Chamber of Commerce for uh, putting this on. So good luck, Captain Trainfield, and vote on September 19th.